Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. Oh, let's try that again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome here to St. Ludmilla's Parish as today we celebrate with Sarah and with Zach. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Zach and Sarah, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your family and your friends. As today, in the presence of God our Father, you will establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your special day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you always. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Ushers, would you please close those back doors to keep the air conditioning in here? And let us sing our praises to God on high. In the midst of all that's happening this year, there's a lot of things that are happening differently. It's great to have those of you that are here physically present, but we also have our recorder going, and so there's many watching from home as well. Zach and Sarah, if you'd like to turn and wave at those that are watching from home, that would be good as well. They just zoomed in on you so they could see the whites of your eyes. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord. And in your kindness, pour out your grace on these your servants, Zach and Sarah, that coming together before your holy altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the readings. You can take your flowers. Rachel. A reading from Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one. They get a good wage for their labor. If one falls, the other will lift up his companion. Woe to the solitary man, for if he should fall, he has no one to lift him up. So also, if two sleep together, they keep each other warm. How can one alone keep warm? Where a lone man may be overcome, two together can resist. A three-ply cord is not easily broken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is 
the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is our day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. This is our day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand has struck with power, the Lord's right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all of these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, 
but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts upon them, they will be like a wise man who built their house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, and they buffeted the house. But it did not collapse because it had been built solidly on rock. Everyone to who listens to these words of mine but does not act upon them, they will be like a fool who built their house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and they buffeted the house, and it collapsed, and it was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the disciples were amazed at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of the scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Well, Zach and Sarah, here we are. It is with great joy that this congregation and those watching from home, that we join you today because it has been an unprecedented year with a lot of twists and a lot of turns, a lot of unknowns. I know that you've had to make some adjustments for this, your special day, and yet here we are. Here we are in the altar, at the altar of God, before family and friends celebrating your relationship and your love. You'll have plenty of stories to tell your children and your grandchildren. Not only did people come to our wedding, but it was live streamed and people could watch it all over the United States. They didn't even have to travel. What a great gift. Sarah and Zach, this day has been a long time coming. You met as students at Xavier Catholic High School. You've been dating for nearly eight years, engaged for the past ten and a half months. Zach, people were wondering what took so long, but you know, you finally asked that question, so here we are. So what does it mean? Why are we here? Because today you entered this church as boyfriend and girlfriend, as fiancé, and you'll leave this sacred space as husband and as wife. It's more than a change of titles. It's more than just signing that civil marriage license. Today you're celebrating one of the seven sacraments of the church. You're celebrating the sacrament of holy matrimony, seeking God's grace, and seeking God's blessing upon this relationship. Your first reading today from the book of Ecclesiastes states, two are better than one, for if one falls, the other one will help them up. You're there to keep each other warm. But then that reading, if you read it carefully, it gives you a curveball. The last line states, a three-ply cord is not easily broken. The first part of that reading speaks about the two of you and about your relationship with one another. So what is this third ply? You, we already know that the first two represent you, and that third ply of the cord represents God. And when you think about a three-ply cord as it's woven together, you can't say that God is over here, or you can't say that, well, we worship God at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. That three-ply cord is interwoven into everything you do, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Because today, you're no longer just two. But today, by coming before this altar and asking for the sacrament of the church, you're asking for God's blessing. You're asking for God to be intertwined in that craziness that we call life. So, what's that look like? As husband and wife, this is part of the Catholic catechism that people don't often like, oftentimes like to read. But what is the role of a husband and what is the role of a wife in the sacrament of holy matrimony? And it simply states that it is your role and responsibility to bring each other to heaven. And if blessed with children, to bring your children to the gates of heaven as well. You do that by word and example, and you do it as St. Matthew states, 
because not everyone who calls out Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. We're challenged to hear that word of God. We're called to put those words into action because we're told in that scripture passage that those who hear the word of God but do not act upon it, they're like building a house on sand. And when the trials of life come, without faith, that house collapses and it's completely ruined. So how is it that the two of you help each other grow in faith? Becoming part of a faith community is important. Praying with and praying for each other is the foundation of what you're called to do. Embracing this gift of faith that your parents instilled within you. Reflect upon the things that you learned at Xavier Catholic High School so many years ago. Putting that into action and reflecting upon the way in which God is present. Because St. Paul says it best. He gives us the image that we can almost put our Christianity on like a coat. He says, put on the cloak of compassion, kindness, humility, and patience. Be willing to forgive each other. Sometimes the hardest part is forgiving ourselves. But then he says, put on another jacket, and that other jacket is another layer, and it's called the gift of love. Recognizing the love that Jesus has for each of you and for each of us that are gathered here, that Jesus loved us so much that he died for our sake on that cross, opening the gates of heaven for those who believe. Sarah and Zach, each time you gather around this sacred altar, we're called to remember and we're called to give thanks. We recall that Jesus is part of that three-ply cord, not just when we need him, but each and every day of our lives. It is with joy that we gather with you today on this beautiful autumn day. You must have done something right to get a day like this. But we're called to remind, be reminded of God's love and his presence within us. It is true that soon you will be called husband and wife. May you embrace the image of this three-ply cord. May you recognize that we need God's presence in our world and we need God's presence within your relationship as well. Perhaps someday sharing this faith with your children, yearning to share the gift of eternal life. You've had numerous positive examples of marriage within your life. And as you sit there and look at the family and friends that are gathered here, many of them married a number of years and witnessing that commitment to you. Know that they're here to support you not just today, but they're here to support and encourage you until death do you part. Know that these models have also had to embrace humility, compassion, love, and forgiveness. It is our prayer this day that God will shower his blessings upon you, that when, as you celebrate the sacrament of holy matrimony, God may bless you today and for many years to come. Congratulations. I invite the wedding party to join us. Zach and Sarah, you have come together in this house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and before this faith community, you can share your intention to enter into marriage. May you be strengthened by the Lord with this sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you, and through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those that he's already consecrated through holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I now ask you to state your intentions. Zach and Sarah, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? If so, respond, I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? If so, respond, I am. 
And are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and as church? If so, respond, I am. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, declare your consent before God and the church. I, Sarah, take you, Zach, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good. good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. Zach, take you, Sarah, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, sickness and in health, to love and honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent that you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord now bless these rings, which Zach and Sarah will give to each other as a sign of their love and fidelity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Amen. Sarah, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. As a community gathered here, we've witnessed their vows and their pledge of love to one another. I now ask you as a community, are you willing to pray for this couple to support them in good times and in bad and sickness and in health until death do they part? If so, respond, we do. We do. Let us stand for the prayers of the faithful. <laughs> Having heard the challenges in these readings and witnessed this love, we now offer these prayers on behalf of our community. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, especially for Zach and Sarah, married today, may their relationship be based on true friendship, forgiveness, and acceptance, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the family members who have modeled the gift of marriage, and for the friends and relatives of Zach and Sarah, and for all who have assisted this couple, prepare for today. May our support of them continue from this day forth, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation and our community, that we may receive the grace to see every human being as a child of God, regardless of race, language, or culture, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our public officials, that the spirit of wisdom may help them strive to work for equal education, suitable housing, access to adequate health care, and equal employment opportunities for all, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those most susceptible to the coronavirus, that God will protect them from illness and surround them with the peace of knowing that they are loved and cared for beyond measure, we pray. Lord, hear our, our prayer. For those who have traveled from near and far to be present for this special day. We also pray in thanksgiving for those who are joining us via live stream. May our time together help us all grow in faith. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember all those who have died. For Sarah's grandmother, Bernice Kanekine, and grandfather Norbert Rickelman, for Zach's grandmother Cecilia Stovey, and uncle Craig Stovey. May they be rewarded with eternal life, and those who mourn their loss be comforted, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, these are our prayers of today. Tomorrow there will be others. We ask that you continue to touch our hearts and our lives so that together we can do your will. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the preparation of the gifts.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made on this occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of holy matrimony. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its holy course. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace so that the chaste and the fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children that you adopt as your very own. By your providence and by your grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonders of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and with all the saints, we now sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who 
I invite you to kneel or be seated for the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and then he broke the bread, and he gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And then he gave the chalice to all of his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ludmilla, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, with Michael, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have now gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have now summoned here before you. We ask that you strengthen, in the grace of marriage, Zach and Sarah, whom you have brought happily to this their wedding day, that under your protection they may always be faithful in their lives, to the covenant that they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children that are scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. Parents. Parents. 
on a typical wedding, I'd invite all of us to hold hands, but due to COVID, we can't do that. So just the bride and groom get to hold hands with their parents. But today we do pray a prayer that Jesus taught all of us. And they taught the disciples when they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. In one voice, let us now pray with this newly married couple. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us now humbly invoke by our prayers, my brothers and sisters, God's blessing upon this bride and this groom, that in his kindness he may favor, he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of holy matrimony. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined today in the sacrament of holy matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Sarah, and upon Zach, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and also enrich the church. In happiness may they praise you, O Lord, and in sorrow may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are always near to them, to comfort them in their times of need. Let them also pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surround them today, may they come to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. to kneel or be seated for the elevation. For communion today, it may look a little bit different for those of you that are visiting here at St. Ludmilla. I'll be receiving the body and blood of Christ, and then I will be bringing the body and blood of Christ down to the bride and the groom. And then as the Eucharistic ministers come down off the sanctuary, if you choose to receive communion today, we ask that you please stand in your pew and we'll bring communion to you. We please ask that you keep your mask on. We'll say the body of Christ. When we go on to the next person, you can pull the mask down and receive the body of Christ at that time. And after you've received, you can kneel down, and then we'll know that everybody's received communion. So hopefully it'll work. It works on Sunday, so it's a good thing. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who instituted the great gift of love, compassion, and the sacrament of holy matrimony. Blessed are those now called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. to you in 
silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each my name. And follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are Our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us stand and pray. By the power of the sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart in love those that you've already joined in this holy union and replenished with one bread and the one chalice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Invite the wedding party to join us.
you'll want your flowers. <laughs> and she'll want hers. After this, it's all over. You get to go home <laughs> and take your flowers with you. As I mentioned in the homily, we do all have a responsibility, not only today, but from this day forward, to continue to pray and to support this couple in this new sacrament of holy matrimony. I now invite you to lift your hand in blessing as we pray for them for the first time as husband and wife. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May the face of God shine upon you. May you know true compassion and mercy. May the Lord walk beside you forever. May the Lord look upon you with kindness. May the Lord fill your hearts with holy peace. God's love be forever within you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it gives me great joy to introduce for the first time as husband and wife, Sarah and Zach Stovey.